a 17-year-old high school senior in Kansas would go to a graduation party. He unfortunately never made it home. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Randy Wayne Leach. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Randy Leach was born on July 25th, 1970, and he basically lived his entire life in Linwood, Kansas. He was born uh, basically into, like, the farm life, uh, and he grew up absolutely just loving animals, farm animals. He had his own pet pig, you know, dogs, cats. The farm that he lived on with his parents, Harold and Alberta Leach, uh, was about 10 acres or so large. And Linwood, Kansas is, I mean, basically, it seems like it's, at the time at least, is all farming area. Uh, there was like a population of, of less than 400 people in this little tiny area back then when this case takes place. And so Randy would always uh, help his mom and dad with work on the farm. He also loved to go out with his friends and hang out. And he was said to be someone, even at his young age, who would do just anything for any of his friends. No questions asked. If he needed to help somewhere, boom, he was there. He was a really, really good student in school as well. He constantly got A's and B's and nothing really ever less than that. He was on the high school basketball team and he had, I guess, tried out for the track team. I don't know if he ever actually made it, but that was something he really wanted to do. At the time of this case, Randy is 17 years old, but he already has basically his uh, future lined up. He wanted to own and operate uh, a lawnmower business and his dad would describe him as this like young entrepreneur someone who just sort of already seemed to know the lay of the land when it came to like you know running a business if you can hear the snoring in the background i apologize that's lola she is passed out but uh randy uh while planning this to start this business he also had already uh, lined up a trade school that he was going to be starting very soon. Unfortunately, he would never get to attend trade school. But Randy uh, loved doing that kind of work so much that his dad actually bought him one of those like big John Deere tractors uh, and Randy was like super pumped to use it. It was April 15th, 1988. Uh, Randy had just got his new John Deere tractor. That morning he woke up, he was in a really good mood according to his parents, super good spirits, was really excited for the day. Uh, he already had a, a, a job lined up, basically he was gonna take his tractor uh, and go to, I guess, a neighbor's house and mow their all of their you know lawn, their backyard, which he did, he did that, and then he came home and then he spent the next couple of hours mowing uh, his own uh, yards, which was a lot to mow because they lived in a really big property. So he did this for like three or four hours. And then his parents said after he was done mowing the lawn, he still was like super happy and he cleaned the tractor so it looked like it was brand new that it had never been used. He took really, really good care of whatever equipment he was using. It just sounds like he had a really good head on his shoulders and that he was really kind of well on his way to being a very successful person. Now, on that particular evening, April 15th, 1988, there was a pre-graduation party uh, going on that night. The party was uh, supposed to start sometime around 6.30. So this is the timeline that was essentially given. At approximately 6.45 p.m., that is the last time that Randy's uh, family, his parents, would see him. He had already gotten done with mowing the lawn, he had just gotten showered, and then uh, he was about ready to leave the house. His dad gave him 20 bucks to get some wax for the new you know, lawnmower. 
uh, to go by like one, like a nearby store to purchase some. And so he leaves the house. At approximately 7 p.m., Randy goes, I guess, to a cousin's house and picks him up. And their plan is just kind of drive around in the car. Uh, and they're using uh, Randy's mom's car. It was a gray four-door 1985, I guess, Dodge sedan, a 600 model, I guess. The license plate on that vehicle is LVJ8721. Randy had his own car, uh, but at the time it was being worked on at the nearby, I guess, DeSoto Auto Shop. And it was actually a red 1966 Mustang, and he loved that car. So, Randy is driving around with his cousin. And then at approximately 8.30 p.m., they stop at a convenience store where they buy some, like, candy, a couple things of soda, and I guess he puts a couple dollars in gas in the car. I think at some point, uh, Randy drops his cousin off back at home, but then Randy goes to actually check on his car at the DeSoto uh, Auto uh, place just to see, you know, the status. And then by roughly 10 p.m., Randy is observed at this uh, pre-graduation uh, bonfire party. And it was uh, it was called the Irwin Farm because it was owned by the Irwin family. I guess it's located in West Bonner Springs. The party was being hosted by the Irwins because they had a daughter who was going to be graduating soon. The party reportedly had somewhere between like 50 to 150 people as they kind of like came in and left and came in and left. It was just sort of a, a lot of people uh, kind of mixed up in the party. There were witnesses who say they think they saw Randy kind of walking around and possibly slurring his talk almost as if he was drunk. No one can actually confirm if they really saw him drinking or if he was actually drunk, it's just more of like what people observed and what their opinion was based on how he seemed to be acting at the party. As a matter of fact, no one can even say they ever even saw a drink in his hand. At approximately 1.30 in the morning, um, one of the party goers says that I guess Randy was heading towards his car, but then Randy couldn't find his keys. So this friend who had seen it had then kind of walked away because he wanted to take this other person wanted to take another person home, and so, therefore, that's the last time that person saw Randy there. Mm -hmm. At approximately 2.05 in the morning, the uh, owner of the house saw Randy in the house, waiting in line to use the restroom. And then that particular sighting was the last time anyone could actually remember seeing Randy anywhere. At approximately 2.30 in the morning, about 25 minutes or so after uh, he was last seen, that's when they say they no longer saw Randy and they actually no longer saw his car on the property. So his car was now gone. The issue is that, and there were still plenty of people kind of lingering around, no one could say they actually physically saw him leave. No one can say they saw him walk away. No one can say they saw him get into his car, and no one can say that they recall even seeing his car leave the property. But it was no longer there, nor was he. The next morning, uh, Randy's parents wake up, and they notice that he is not at the house. He's not in his room. And that immediately concerned them because they gave him a curfew of like 12.30 or 1, and it was something he never, ever broke um, so they were really concerned when he just wasn't there. And of course, this is well before cell phones existed or anything like that. So they, they kind of immediately went into a panic. Like, this is not like him. His car isn't here. They called around and, you know, to people and they said, oh, we haven't seen him since, you know, the party last night. And no one can say they've seen him. So they, the parents immediately report him missing. Police, uh, I think after like a 24-hour period, from what I understand, I'm not positive if they really waited that long or not, but they would go to the site of the party, and by the time police got there, the entire thing was already cleaned up, you know, all, because it was a big party, huge mess, so the family and, and other people cleaned up everything. So there really wasn't anything they could see or find to show any sign of Randy or where he, where he may have gone. I think some people had kind of floated out the idea of, well, you know what, maybe Randy just decided to pick up and leave. 
No. <laughs> there, this was a young man who had everything planned out. He had everything lined up. He had plans for his own business. He had already registered for trade school. Uh, he had his beloved uh, Mustang in the shop. It, there, there was nothing to indicate he had any plans of just leaving. So police were able, they, they essentially said pretty much from the get-go that they don't believe that Randy left on his own accord. They don't know if maybe Randy got into an accident, possibly, or if someone did something to him. I'm not sure how soon after this happened, but I guess the party location uh, apparently burned to the ground uh, in a completely unrelated uh, event sometime after Randy went missing. I don't, again, I don't know exactly when, but that was just kind of weird. That whole place is burnt down. This is the 80s getting into the 90s. Satanic panic is all the rage. I have talked about satanic panic a couple times in, you know, in various videos as, you know, being kind of like a, a motive for what people think may have happened to certain people. And it came into play here. Uh, it was in 1988 when a man came forward to say that he believes that he saw Randy basically was taken uh, and brought to a cave system I guess like a, they're called the storage caves. It's a cold storage area where it's like all underground. So it's like an actual, like, not just like a random cave. It's like an actual storage system built into this cave. I guess this man said he saw Randy get kidnapped, brought to these caves, was held captive for a little bit, and then was murdered there. He didn't just say it was a random person. No, he said it was a local cult. A cult had kidnapped him for the purpose of sacrificing him, you know, for the big guy downstairs. This guy says, I saw his corpse. I saw his body. It was him. So police go to this cave system and they, you know, search through everything. It's a pretty big area, but they thoroughly searched it and, and they didn't find anything to indicate that any kind of like satanic, uh, devil worshiping, cult like behavior was going on uh, in this caves system. They just, they found nothing. And then I guess a few years later in 1993, police had arrested a few men under the suspicion that they may have had something to do with Randy's disappearance. But those three men were very quickly released and all charges were dropped and police admitted they were mistaken about, I guess, info they got that led to these three men. At some point during the investigation, someone that knew Randy uh, went to police to say they found a severed foot uh, near the banks of, I guess, uh, a river in that area. And I guess the foot was tested and they confirmed it did not belong to Randy. Apparently, Randy's parents said that this man who claims they found that foot, uh, I guess the parents said they saw that man driving past their house uh, the morning that Randy would have disappeared. And he drove by the house very, very slowly like he was creeping past the house. If he has any connection to Randy's disappearance, whoever this man is, this man who found the foot, this man who was seen driving past the house, is unknown because that individual has died. Police, you know, they interviewed several people who were at the party and they all kind of had similar stories about seeing him and at the party and nothing seemed unusual, but nothing really ever came from it. And I guess uh, now here in 2023, I guess a couple of those people from the party have just have since passed away just for, you know, on natural causes and whatnot. In that case, you have witness after witness after witness, unfortunately, uh, you know, dying. Randy had no uh, quarrels with anyone. Uh, he was not seen getting into any arguments or fights at the party or, you know, outside of the party, you know, even beforehand. 
He wasn't like a, a super popular kid in school. He also wasn't someone who really got involved in much, bad or good. He just sort of kind of went to school and was just a, a normal good kid. So police have just had very, very little info to go on. They've had very few legitimate tips, very few legitimate leads, and they're still to this day at a standstill. Randy has never been found. No items belonging to Randy he may have had that particular day have ever been found. No clothing, no wallet, nothing. The car, uh, his mother's vehicle, has also never been found. In the recent years, uh, they have looked through uh, the bodies of water in the area. They've looked through, I guess, the Kansas River uh, in lakes and ponds and everything. They've even, the, in, and through these searches, looking specifically for Randy, thinking maybe he drove into the lake. It happens. Uh, unfortunately, it happens kind of frequently. While they're searching for Randy, they have found other vehicles uh, that they have pulled from the lake and every time they pull a car from the lake they just you know they see you know is this was this the car and it's never been randy's car it's always been other vehicles if there's like you know human remains in them i don't i don't know but they have searched multiple places they have had teams of people looking for you know his vehicle in the lakes and the rivers and the ponds and the woods everywhere and even to this day you know, we're talking over 30 years now. And after multiple searches, they've still come up with nothing. That's pretty crazy. Randy Wayne Leach was 17 years old at the time of his disappearance. He was a big kid. He was six foot three, 220 pounds. He was wearing a blue pocket t-shirt, blue Levi jeans, uh, some white sneakers and white socks. He has brown hair, blue eyes. He has a mole on his left ear. And again, the vehicle he was driving was a gray four-door 1985 Dodge 600 sedan. License plate LVJ8721. His mother has fought and fought and fought to make sure that his case is still out there in the world so that people are aware of Randy Leach. Mm. She has done everything in her power. She has, you know, had uh, memorials. She has had, you know, search parties. She has spoken from like the steps of their state capital. Uh, and the police there are still actively trying to, you know, investigate this case. It's not from lack of trying from mm. what I can tell. His mother, Alberta, is still alive, and unfortunately, his dad uh, passed away um, a few years back, and he died never getting to know where his son was and what happened to him. I sincerely hope that Alberta Leach gets to find out what happened to her baby boy. I hope she gets to put him to rest, and I hope she gets the answers that her and her late husband fought to get. If you do have any information, please contact the Leavenworth County Sheriff's Department there in Kansas. You can also contact the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, and that particular number is 1-800-KS-CRIME. Someone somewhere out there has got to know the truth about what happened to Randy Leach. Perhaps that someone is you. And that is it for this case, True Crime Baronies. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope this family gets closure soon.
If you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I tell true crime stories, obviously, here on YouTube, four of them a week. I also tell stories over on TikTok. I also tell a story on Instagram and Facebook every week as well. So please feel free to subscribe to me here. Please give this video a like so it pushes the uh, video out to YouTube, to more people. And of course, subscribe and then follow me on those other places if you so choose. Uh, the link tree to all of those places is in my link tree below. If you have a case you would like me to cover, you can email me. That information is also below. Uh, please check my crime or case list in my link tree first. Scroll through it. You can search through it as well. If you don't see the name you want me to cover, just email me the name, where it happened, when it happened, and I will add it to my list eventually, I promise. If you already see the name on there, please don't email it to me. It's already there. I pick my cases that I cover as randomly as I can, but eventually it will get covered. I just don't know when. If you'd like to support me in any way, I do sell merch. I sell t-shirts and hoodies and a wine glass. We do ship all over the world internationally. Um, so that's a, the best way to support me. And it's in the link tree below as well. If you have a Discord account and you want to join my Discord server, please be over the age of 18 to do so. Uh, but it's also in the link tree. Uh, and it's a very chill, quiet Discord. We just have very quiet, normal conversations. Um, so please feel free to join. But that is it for this video, True Crime Maroonies. So I shall see you for the next one. Until then, ta-ta for now.